I'm a geologist. I've had a lot of experience on a worldwide basis uh, with a focus on Nevada. Nevada is a great place to look for gold uh, in many places, but boy, you can find elephants out there and there are elephants. It's a great place to look for and the geology is great as well. Um, a little bit of history on the project is important uh, because one of the things being under the radar is this is an area of Nevada. Nevada has been explored all over, but really a lot of areas have it. We're in the area of big mines, Borealis, Esmeralda, Anaconda, which at one time was the biggest copper mine in the world, uh, the Comstock load uh, north of Tonopah. But our particular little area, which is on top of uh, the mountain range, the Wasak Range, uh, belonged to all private mining families in Nevada. The, these guys did not do deals with majors uh, and just didn't do it that way. They were miners and they just look at this. They did not explore, they just mine. And I first visited this project in 1994 when I went up there uh, with the one of the representative of the owners. And I said to him, well, do you have anything for me? A map, a drill hole, a history? And he said, no, no, we have nothing. We just mined it. So I went up this hill, this mountain, and got to the top and I was very impressed. I'd just come off Cortez Horse Canyon and Pipeline 2 uh, geology, so I was well aware of what the structures in Nevada for the big mines are like. Uh, and I was really impressed with the size of what I was seeing when I was able to pick some samples, confirm gold, and so on and so forth. But it was the size of the thing. Now, well, that's very good to have this great looking fault zone and it's thousand feet wide and goes on forever. But does it really have any gold? There's a lot of these and have nothing in it. Well, of course, what did I see? Uh, significant underground mining, underground being big word, uh, 1915 era. They went in there and they tunneled, uh, they drilled internal shafts. Uh, and this is all hand stuff. This is 1915. So there's no equipment, there's no compressors, there's nothing. And they're driving it up this hill. And they actually built a mill up there as well. Uh, from our history of Nevada, we realized to do that in 1915, uh, you got to have at least the minimum is an ounce a ton, 34 grams. If you don't have 34 grams, they don't even mine it. And these guys did over 2,000 feet of underground workings. So I was really impressed, obviously. Uh, and I tried to do the deal, but unfortunately I couldn't because in 94, the title, the title claims were in a bit of a mess. Uh, I couldn't do clear chain of title. Anyway, I kept on the project uh, and uh, kept in a, with the family, now the granddaughters of the original prospectors. And finally, in 2010, was able to clean the thing up. Uh, better get going because I'm on the clock. Uh, where are we? Well, we talked about it. We're in, you know, Nevada's got these trends of Battle Mountain, Carlin, Gachel, and the Walker Lane trend. We're right there. We're close. We're a half an hour out of the little town of Yarrington, an hour and a half out of uh, Reno. So nothing there. Our lab is in Reno. Everything is local. Uh, we have no problem with infrastructure, roads, or transport. Highlights of the project. All right, past mining, that's all very good. Never been drilled, no data, which in a way is good because it's an undiscovered country. Uh, it's like a treasure box, but for a geologist, I got nothing to rely on, no maps. No government maps, absolutely nothing. So we have to start at scratch. So this is what our claim project looks like. Uh, if we follow this, the ones we'll be concentrating on are the Lapon Canyon Rose Claims. And the original mining is way, way up here. This is about 8,400 feet. And down here, we're about 6,000 feet. Originally, they started with placer mining down here in 1880. And then figured out, well, the gold's down here, maybe there's some up there. So they went up this canyon, very steep, built a mule trail, got up there, and the original discovery is reported to be 60 ounces a ton. Uh, so they went after this thing and they worked in there for a, a significant amount of time. Remember, this is all hand. For today, it, it's hardly anything, but in those days, you can imagine mules going up, uh, hauling equipment up there was amazing. So originally, we bought 36 claims. Uh, today we've expanded, we'll talk about these if we have time, the little pike speak and rattlesnake claims, but these are our concentration. And what we're going to just talk about today is this two claims, four claims out of 156. And uh, this is what we've concentrated on, and this is enough to make a significant deposit. The trend we're looking at actually continues on for four kilometers, ends up here. We'll briefly talk about at the end, this is sort of the blue sky stuff. We barely touched that. We'll get to that a little later on. All right. 
I don't have much documentation. I said the only thing I had were cartoons that were on the back of an envelope that I found on Nevada School of Mines. Uh, and this is one of the original owners who bit, we put a section on. This is his three addits. Uh, and this, he sort of said on the map, well, go this way. Well, okay, actually it's right. Though it was written in 19, I think 24. Um, the other map I had was from a guy called Newell. Newell is sort of a mentor of Nevada geology way, way back when Nevada geology actually started. And he was able to access the mining area that I'm not able anymore because it, it collapsed. Not all of it, I was spent some considerable time in there. But what was great about this map uh, or this section is these samples that he got after they had finished mining. So you see there is a lot of gold, the grades are great. And this is after they had mined. So I said, well, that's all great fun. Uh, it, it's worth drilling, but where do we go? So we started this. Uh, we started uh, 2015, well, not really. Uh, we actually started the first drill hole on December 10th, 2015. Somebody would ask me, can we drill 12 months of the year in Nevada at that altitude? Well, I proved it. But what was great fun is the, the first type of assays. We're getting things, and when I give you the length, our true width is about 80% of the length I give you. So we're always drilling almost perpendicular, almost always on true width. So we take, well, of course, a highlight hole. The second hole I did was almost eight grams over 22 meters. And we continued drilling. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't go very fast. That was my big, big problem, getting traction. Of course, this was done in not the best years, 2015, 2014. We all know what the market looked like back, and Keith actually mentioned that. It was hard getting traction, getting people to look at you. And because of the infrastructure difficulties, there are no roads on the side of a hill or on the side of a mountain, it was tough getting going. We couldn't do that many holes at a time. Financing was difficult, but what really stopped us was both infrastructure and the geological knowledge. But we kept on plugging away and we kept on repeating this type of results. We look at one result again, 12 grams over 67 meters. Um, and we're always doing perpendiculars. So what did we prove that we had? Well, we have an envelope of lower grade material, uh, you know, a gram, two grams. We have, a, this thing is a thousand feet in width running like that. That's open pitable material, but I'm a high grade guy. I like high grade. And what this project gives us, um, it gives us a high grade center zone. This is what they mined. We actually call it the central zone. And they mine this, um, but your first reaction you have is, oh yeah, small veins. This is not what this is. This is great fun. We can actually trace this high grade zone for thousands of feet and it's got significant widths uh, up to up to 20 feet in width of just high grade material. When I say high grade, I define that as over one ounce or 34 grams per ton. So we continued on 2017 drilling, working against the market, couldn't go fast enough, hard to get traction when you're only doing 12 holes per year and announcing all 12. The stock goes up and of course, I'm not gonna work for another two, three months. So of course, stock comes back down. Uh, 2019 was what I call our big year. Uh, it was the year that finally we believe we have enough data to model something. So we, use, we do have consultants, we're all geologists, but we have to use independent consultants. So we're using MDA out of Reno, very well known, and gave them enough data to say, look, can you guys actually do something with this? Because our drilling, when we drill, we're trying to see how big this thing can be. So we didn't put one hole next to the other. We're drilling thousands of feet from one hole to the other. We'll see the drill plan in a second. Um, and finally, in 2019, we were able to model for the first time using SERPAC. So the software, it calculates how close your drills are and how we can do it. And we actually did two holes on prediction. Uh, the two holes, 42 and 43, were drilled 700 feet away from the nearest drill hole. That was based on a prediction of SERPAC. And both of those holes were probably the best holes we've ever drilled. Um, great fun. Uh, so this is all very good. Uh, so let's look at the plan quickly for our drill positions. I'm trying to go fast, I know I'm on the clock. So if you look at this uh, down here, this is our drill roads as they go up the switchback. We're climbing now down here where it says Walker River Resources, we're at approximately 7,000 feet. And way up here, we're at 9,000 feet. So we just go up this road. These holes in a row, all these holes intersected gold mineralization. Now I mean gold mineralization, I mean better than 0.6 grams. It's low grade at some areas and it gets high grade. The high grade is in the central zone going here. But we found gold at high grade here, all through here. And what's great fun is way up here. 
and this lines up up there. This hole was, we just built this room for one hole and went way up there. And we got 20 grams over 18 feet, uh, 20 grams over six meters. Sorry, I talked, I'm working in the US, so we're still in, in feet and inches and, and ounces. So we kept on drilling. We can see a lot of drill holes. We can see they're fairly far, far apart, uh, which shows the extension of this zone. We also know we drilled down to here. We don't know what continues on the other side, but that's later on. If we looked at what a volume we've done so far, we've, ex we've explored over about close to 3,000, 2,300 feet. Now it's gone up to that, to about 2,600 feet laterally. We've done about 1,200 feet in elevation. So actually we see this thing up here and way down here. So that's an elevation that's 1,200 feet of vertical extent. Plus we're about 600, actually we're 1,000 feet wide today. This is a little bit cartoon. What I, drilling, well, drilling is always great fun, but what's good about drilling is you gotta look at true width. Uh, we all know about down dip and all that. Well, this one isn't that case because we're always drilling perpendicular to the zone. I go back to this one. Uh, our, the structure we're looking at is striking in a direction like this. So we're northeast structures. So we're always drilling perpendicular to it. And this is the whole that represents what I call pervasive mineralization. It's not a uh, high grade with nothing around it and a little more high grade. It's pervasive mineralization throughout. You can see if this thing runs for 180 feet, it's average. It's average on this before we cut it was 24 grams per ton over 180, 167 meters. Uh, that's, that's not bad. If we cut it, we go down 12. Cut means I reduce the high grade down to one, one ounce per ton. And that came down with still a very acceptable width. What is great about this is width. Uh, when you mine, I tell people, you don't mine ounces of gold, you mine tons of rock. And for tons of rock, you've got to move, have no gold in them, that's going to cost you a lot of money. And that's what kills mines often, is the fact we have to develop, it may be high grade, but we just can't mine it because it's not wide enough. This one's got width to it. Quick, the high grade, again, we see this as a map, uh, as, as our Sir Pat comes out with it. And we call this the high grade blob, <laughs> for lack of a better word. We can't project it because there's no drilling. The computer will not, the software won't project it. But we see here more high grade up here. So we can fathom this going this way. Obviously, we have a series of drill holes in here going. The two holes I talked about that we predicted based on this blob, I like the high grade. This is all, this whole area is lower grade with this blob in the center. We're these two holes. Uh, we base this on the elevation position and these two holes are way out here and yet the high grade is pervasive. We can see it go over there. Uh, this is that pad, uh, this is way as far away as the other one. So what's, what is really this about? This is about an envelope and I look at tons, I look at this potential, I've been involved, I was actually at Gold Strike, uh, I, was, I knew Dr. Brian Meekly, I was there when they actually made Three years after the original discovery, I worked there. Um, I understand big deposits in Nevada. This is elephant country. Five million ounce deposits in Nevada aren't rare. What's the potential of this one? Well, it, it's in that ballpark. In other words, the potential. That doesn't mean it's there, but so far it's looking good. We have a lot of tons. We've explored a significant area. We haven't even touched the project per se. But the goal of this right now, this year, is for once in our lives, we had enough infrastructure. So seeing what was happening last year, I decided to go for growth uh, and invest a lot of money in infrastructure, roads, drill pads. And now we are ready for the aggressive drill program. We also got finance, which is great fun. And now we're able to do what, we, what this project really deserves. We're going to stop, I like to mention, we'll stop puttering around on the thing and really go for it. Uh, I was there three weeks. I was there the last three weeks. I'm on quarantine right now. This is why I'm working from home. Uh, but we worked really hard building the infrastructure. We're now ready to go. We'll have a minimum of a 60 hole program to do out there. We're going to be using two eggs. We're starting shortly. Two phase program. Our consultants, MBA, will do methodical drilling every 100 feet for our 43 101, which has begun. And I will also put around on exploration, exploring more of the high grade material, trying to extend the high grade up here. Uh, we're looking at a mass of rock in the many tens of millions of tons. Um, it, it's, it's looking very, very juicy, very tasty. And now I think we've got, we'll get some momentum behind it. 
I quickly went down. Uh, I mentioned you. I'm running out of time, but I said if we're way up here on the mountain, if you remember our claims, we're way, way back here. This is another picture. And from this point on, we're four kilometers away. Where we're doing is four kilometers away, but it's on strike with this. So we really know now that the zone that we're looking at, which is an altered sheer fault crossing, typical in Nevada, typical structure. Um, it continues. What, is it pregnant? I, I don't know. I mean, that's what we didn't know until we went here. We were hunting around the bottom of the hill. We're now at 6,500 feet down, 3,000 feet below. And what do we run into? We into an old data. So the old boys were there. They mined it. But we took a sample. Yeah. We don't see the gold. There's no pyrite. We have no sulfides. It's free gold. There's not much quartz either. This is all very altered with iron oxides and so on. Uh, and what do we get? We got 17 grams per gold just on a quick assay. So they saw it, it's there, it's pregnant. Hopefully this will continue. And this is our drill plan for that area. I haven't timed myself. I don't know if I'm running out of time, but quickly we have two other portions of our project that are again unexplored. It's all part of the same group of private people. Uh, we went up there and we counted on pipes uh, over eight shafts, 15 addicts. Now, this is all high grade. And we took a sample there too, just on the edge, and we got nine grams of gold and 2% um, copper. So what does all, all this mean? I believe a lot of the old guys, uh, the prospectors originally went into Nevada who crossed the desert in 1860, were crossing to California and saw this. They were as good as us. They were better because they put their money up. Uh, they explored, or we used them a lot. When I see what they did, uh, I mean, what we're doing today, I say we've got massive potential here, uh, tremendous potential, but uh, we now have to do it. We're doing it, and we have now the ability to go after it. We're starting, or drilling is starting very shortly. And for once, with the number of holes we'll be doing over the next period of time, going to two weeks later on, we'll have a constant flow of news, which you never had before. And finally, the gold we found. Uh, we didn't drill one hole next to the other. They're well separated. They show the potential of this thing. Well, it's not going away. The gold's not going to disappear. And not every hole will run. I wish it was, but that's not true. But we'll get some really good results. I'm really confident of that.